week. And so basically we're just wanting to touch in to the fundamental goodness and potentiality within us to bring it forward, to let it nurture us so that we can be of benefit to self and others. So just take a minute and start by scanning through the body, allowing any tension to release. Allowing any micro adjustments you might need to make to your posture so that you feel stable. And then bring to mind your altruistic motivation, a strong intention to connect with and develop your fullest potential. However you frame it, whatever you would call it, set an intention to connect with it in order to expand into it. and by doing so being of most benefit to both yourself and others. And then shift your focus to the breath. And just be with the breath, being with the present, being at home within yourself, gently attentive, relaxed with clarity. And now shifting your mind from single-pointedness to analysis. And during the analysis, we just go back and forth between what covers, 
conceals, obscures all that is pure and potential within us. And then we shift to looking at that potential, its different aspects and ways it develops. And so we start by thinking about latent desire or the tendency of attachment, the way in which it's like a lotus flower, at first delightful, then gradually fades. So easy to be captivated by the momentary beauty So easy to be lost in just the surface and the superficial. And so just identify that tendency of attachment within you. That tendency to be transfixed by what is obvious and immediate, what is worldly and samsaric. And because of being captivated by this superficial beauty, then we don't penetrate through the petals to the Buddha image within. the Buddha image within being stainless, just like our fundamental nature. This fundamental nature can become the wisdom body or dharmakaya of a Buddha, completely able to achieve one's own welfare, stable, continuous happiness, stable, continuous peace, none of which is at the cost of others or harms others in any way. And then think about anger, the latent seeds of anger, the potential for it, the tendency for it, the habit of it, being like a swarm of angry bees, ready to sting, agitated, constant movement, the way anger makes us prickly, unapproachable. The way it makes us chaotic, obsessive, But no matter how chaotic or aggressive the bees are, at the center of all that chaos is pure, sweet honey. Just like the ultimate truth, the emptiness of our own mind. Everything is one taste in emptiness. 
And like honey, that one taste is sweet and full of possibilities. And then think about your ignorance in both its latent, dormant form as well as the habit of it. The way in which it covers and obscures, the way a husk covers a grain. Fibrous, papery, not nutritional covering the grain, full of health and vitality. Beneath the husk is the grains so diverse and various, just like all the variations of the teachings of Dharma, all the teachings on the conventional truth, vast and varied to suit the minds specific dispositions. And then we think about not just the latencies, but the manifest afflictions. When they've fully arisen, when they've taken over and are driving the mind. Attachment, anger, ignorance. All of those things that continually bring us rebirth, especially in the desire realm. Imagine all of these afflictions that seem so normal and natural, so natural that they come up without thinking or planning them. Think of them as a heap of filth or garbage, covering perfect, pure gold. If we knew the gold was at the bottom of the pile of filth. We would be courageous and dig through it, brave the hardship of the smells, the dangers. That gold at the center of it is changeless, can't be permeated by the garbage. It's permanent, it's just like emptiness or suchness. Emptiness itself is permanent like gold, uncontaminated like gold, even covered by the most manifest and filthy of delusions that harm oneself and others. Still there is that purity beneath.
and the ground of the latencies of ignorance that create less polluted karma of hearers and solitary realizers is like the earth, underneath which is the buried treasure, like our naturally abiding potential, which can become non-abiding nirvana, the nature dharmakaya, svavavikakaya, So thinking even when we've achieved this ground, free from the coarser latencies of ignorance, still there is further treasure to be dug. You can imagine this also like the skin covering the seed of a fruit. It breaks through when the sprout arrives. Like the acquired afflictions, the objects to be abandoned on the path of seeing. We burst through the covering, the skin as the qualities develop and sprout into an enormous tree full of the fruits of enlightenment. This is like the transforming Buddha essence, that Buddha nature which is to be developed can become the wisdom dharmakaya, the jhana dharmakaya. the seed for enlightenment always within you has the power to break open and sprout and grow. And then you can think of the innate afflictions and their seeds, the objects to be abandoned on the path of meditation, are to be thrown off the way a tattered rag is to be thrown off of covering a perfect Buddha statue. We want to throw off the grasping at inherent existence. Underneath is the perfection that is already there, the naturally pure Buddha essence. That aspect of our Buddha nature is already complete, like a completed Buddhist statue, perfect in all aspects, only covered by this tattered cloth, the innate afflictions in their seeds. And then we think about the obscurations to be eliminated on the seven impure stages after we've realized emptiness. We need to move on from all of the habits of having grasped at inherent existence. Just like a baby who will become a universal monarch must move on from the destitution and poverty of the family. Poverty is left behind 
as the inheritance of the Buddha nature is received. Right now we are like the impoverished, destitute woman with the baby who will become a universal monarch in our womb. As we overcome the afflicted obscurations, we receive our inheritance. Buddhahood. And then we think that the remaining obscurations, the cognitive obscurations, that which prevents us from full omniscience, what we need to eliminate. But as we move on from those eight, nine, and ten grounds, it's like removing a fine layer of clay dust or a clay mold surrounding a brand new, gleaming golden Buddha statue whose radiance reflects everything around it like a mirror. This is like the Buddha essence that will bring forth the emanation body, Thirnamanakaya, the ability to benefit all in an unmistaken way with pure compassion and loving kindness. Imagine the gleaming Buddha statue breaking free of its clay mold as the last levels of obscuration are removed. And so then imagine that your Buddha nature takes the form of a Buddha at your heart center. That it is perfect and complete the way it will be in the future. As well as that innate purity that has always been there. Imagine that the Buddha at your heart radiates the light of wisdom and compassion all throughout your body and mind. Radiating so much that it clears the darkness of ignorance from your mind pacifies the suffering of your body, soothes worries, clarifies doubts. You become radiant, full of light. You become so filled with light that light radiates out through all of your pores. Streams of light going out in every direction. On the tip of each ray of light is a miniature Buddha. And 
and this light ray and these Buddhas go to every single sentient being, awakening their own heart, nourishing their Buddha nature. The Buddhas at their hearts begin to shine and gleam and fill them up as well. And with light going out in every direction, you add strength to this intention by adding the mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha. continue to reverberate within you and radiate out becoming a powerful condition to ripen the minds of others becoming a strong cause within your own mind to awaken and gently relaxing your attention. Have a nice night, land of talks.